How's How everything, you, Ron? Ron? Bob Lazeri, Tony D'Angelo, we appreciate you, Ron. It's so a really much, honor Ron. to have you on and, and to commemorate the uh, 69 Mets tonight. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, calling into the show. Uh, my first feeling, uh, Ron, first of all, I celebrated a birthday yesterday. I can't believe I'm pushing 50 years old, but can you believe it's been 40 years since the miracle in Flushing? God, nobody would admit they're 50 doing TV. Uh, <laughs> Not yet, Ron. It's Eastern Not Connecticut. You're man. awesome. You are awesome. Yeah. Well, I feel like I can open up now. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it is, um, you know what, we've been celebrating uh, 40 years this year, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it um, occasions um, a weekend at Shea. Uh, Oh, did I say Shea at City Field uh, uh, yes. to yeah. celebrate uh, the 40th? Yeah. Hopefully it's City Field uh, when you get up here, Ron. You, you, <laughs> you just don't know these days. But uh, Well, it'll be a ballpark. We yes, don't know yeah. what the sign will say. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, I think um, all of us hope it's City Field because if they go down, then we know nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. So uh, Tony and I were thinking that they, if they, if it does go down, maybe they could just name it after a player year by year. Swoboda yeah, we Field were saying in Swoboda 2009, Field, right? AG <laughs> Park in 2010. But uh, you know, let's just talk a little bit about uh, when you came up, Ron. Then we'll get to the '69th magical season a little bit. But uh, you hit 19 home runs in your rookie year, which was a Met record for a rookie. Uh, I think a few of your first major league hits were home runs. Until, um, until Daryl Strawberry broke it. Um, there you go. Yeah, you probably and, thought uh, baseball what, was a piece of what, cake, though. <laughs> well, yeah, I did. Um, but but I, I, sent a, I sent a note to Strawberry, and I said, uh, un, un, until you broke my record, nobody knew I even had one. But... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I hit 19 home runs, and, you know, you would have thought, hey, you might get smart and hit a few more than that. But uh, uh, apparently I didn't, uh, and, and apparently they figured me out. Uh, the pitchers in the National League figured me out a little more than uh, I figured me out. Well, they had some great pitchers back then, and uh, obviously they got, yeah. they got uh, hold of the information that you love the fastball, Ron, and uh, this is how they adjust. But you did have some success those first few years. You, uh, you drove in 50 or more runs those first four years. Um, and, you know, I was just talking to Tony before you came on, Ron. The team lost about 400 games in your first four years. Uh, maybe you can give uh, our viewers. <laughs> I mean, it's something when you think about what it. What kept was us from committing suicide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was the team morale like going into the '69 season? I, I, I just I, remember a story from Casey Stengel. Uh, you know, the first year of the Mets in '62, they lost 120, um, and and um, there was a there was a, a story about Stengel got the team together uh, uh, after the last game, and he said, uh, "Fellas," he says. Just, just remember this: uh, uh, none of you, uh, none of you should blame yourselves. This was a total team effort. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "And have a nice winter." Uh, <laughs> Sounds like a Casey. He's something. Right? Oh, but, boy. You know, I, I think, I think, uh, you know, we lost, um, we lost over a hundred in uh, '65, my rookie year. Oh, yeah. um, we lost, um, uh, I think, a uh, hundred in. Uh, uh, I, I think we the, we lost a hundred and sixty six. I think we did not lose a hundred in nineteen sixty seven. It was the first time in the Mets uh, history that uh, uh, I think in sixty six they did not lose a hundred. Yeah, ninety five. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And then one hundred one the following. Yeah, year. and then we lost a hundred. And then you know, just to prove we had not lost our touch. Uh, we lost 167. We were yeah, a little better team in 68, and we thought going into 69 um, that we might uh, we might make some strides. I mean, I felt like I felt like we might be a little better team. Um, uh, Jerry Grody uh, has has told a lot of people, the catcher on that team, that that uh, you know he he. He he thought we were going to go to the World Series, uh, you know, in oh. spring training. I wish he would have told me, <laughs> <laughs> take some pressure off. But uh, you know, I, I just thought we might get better. You know, start knocking on 500. Um, you know, uh, just take just take a couple of steps forward. We knew we were going to have pretty good pitching. Uh, Seaver, Kuzman, Ryan, Gentry, McAndrew. Mm. Um, 
uh, Don Cardwell, uh, Tug McGraw, uh, Ron Taylor. Um, we, you know, that's pretty uh, pretty good staff. That's Cal boring, Coons. Yeah. yeah. So, so so we felt like we had a chance to be a little better in that regard. Um, but um, yeah, I don't think anybody. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I I, I don't recall anybody saying uh, you know, hey, make sure you get your rest. We're going to win it all. Boy, but, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and is, I don't remember that conversation. It's it's and, and I just told Tony beforehand too. Also, Ron, uh, after those. Well, your first four miserable years uh, with the team, as far as wins and losses, that the team, uh, the the fans, the Mets led the uh, league in fan attendance in '69. Uh, yeah. These these fans must have been loyal, and they must have been great to play in front of. Well, it doesn't hurt when it's the second year of the World's Fair and mm. it's still open, <laughs> and yeah. you're right across the street. <laughs> that, that would help too, right? Yeah. Get, get the bodies. Well, in I the think area. that had uh, I think that had a whole lot to do with it. Um, you know, you know, uh, we were uh, we were right next door to uh, uh, to, to the to Flushing Meadows, the uh, site of the uh, of the World's Fair, and you know what? That's back when World's Fairs really meant something too. Mm, we you know? absolutely right. So we we spent a little time over there, and uh, you know, looked at all the. Uh, you know, houses of the future and cars of the future and yeah. um, restaurants of the future and all of that. You know, it, that that was uh, that that was still uh, how a lot of that technology uh, got exposed. And then, you know, I think after that, World Fair started to taper off a little. Mm. You're watching Monday Night Sports Talk here on CTV 14. On the on the phone with us, Ron Swoboda, outfielder for the 1969 Mets. Tony, question for Ron. And Ron, I, I have to confess something. Um, I was in the crowd on June 22nd, 1969, the day that you struck out five times, and I was rooting for you to do it. And I, I right now I feel terrible, but <laughs> I. I uh, I, what do you want from me? Absolution. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, I, 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 I just, you know, because you've been such a gentleman throughout. I, um, you played for Gil Hodges, and, and uh, you know, there's not too many people these days, I think, that even remember Gil. And could you give us your impressions of, of what that was like? Yeah, we had we had a, a, a at times a stormy relationship because um, I. Um, I always, I always had a little bit of a, a, a problem with uh, authority figures. Um, mm. st still do, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> Never leaves you, Rob. Uh, um, and, and you know, um, uh, certain authority figures. I mean, as soon as you start pushing your authority, and I, I got the. I got the misimpression that he was trying to push his authority around a little bit when when I, when it was never in question, you know. Um, but but um, uh, you know, if you're going to be the manager, be the manager and and make the rules, and then we'll have to live by the rules or we pay the price. Mm. I understand that perfectly, you know. Um, right. You know, but if you're out and you're having a good time and it's getting close to curfew, well, we might miss one or two of those. Okay, mm. but. Uh, you know, uh, it didn't happen often, but uh, it was really my mistake. Hodges, Hodges was uh, really as sharp a baseball mind as as I think was in baseball. And I played for Gil Hodges, and I played for Gene Mock. And you know, Mock always had this uh, reputation. Uh, Gene Mock as a as a as a genius, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the way you define each guy, in in, in my estimation, was. Gene Mock saw the game from a very complex standpoint, and he tried to teach it from a very complex standpoint. I think Gil Hodges could understand the complexity of baseball, but he resolved it in a very simple, understandable way. That I can relate to a lot easier, and I think most, most players can relate to that. I think the best coaches, whether you're coaching hitting or uh, pitching or any aspect of baseball, a coach does the player a favor when he can understand the complexity and resolve it in a more simple way um, and, and teach from that basis. I think that's how it works better. That's where Hodges came from. And when he pulled his creative moves, uh, you understood what he was doing, and you went, wow, that's, that's, that's a pretty cool idea, and, uh, and I think I know where he's going. Uh, Gene Mock would baffle you. Uh, yep. you, you know, Gene Mock would, you, would do his thing, and you'd go, what was that about, you know? And, and I think that's the difference. 
And they, uh, he had to be a great manager, uh, Ron. I mean, the team had a 242 team batting average. Of course, it was led by Cleon Jones, Tony, 340 yeah. that year. Finished third yeah, in the league. he should have led the league. You know, Cleon could have led the league. And, Absolutely. And, and, and he could have led the league for a few years, I think, because uh, Cleon really understood how to hit. Mm. Um, spent time looking at video. Uh, it wasn't video back then. It was film. Film loops. They took some film loops of us, and you put them in a little projector, and you could sit in this little room that was as big as a you know a coat room, and uh, and and you watch this stuff on a wall, and and he would do that, and and from that he learned a little something about hitting, and um, I I you know I I think he truly understood the uh, the technique of hitting. I. I I don't think I ever really understood it until a lot later in my life. I, I'm broadcasting games here for the AAA baseball mm -hmm. team right. yep. uh, in New Orleans. Last couple of years, we were affiliated with the Mets no longer. Mm -hmm. um, they moved to Buffalo. But um, uh, um, I, hanging around these AAA coaches and, and um, managers, um, you know, you see the game differently when you're in your 60s, and, um, and, and you know, there was plenty of room to learn more, and I've been trying to do just that. And, and I think uh, now I understand what Cleon knew back when we were playing. 340, Tony, finished third behind guys named Rose and Clemente. Uh, and on that team, yeah. Ron, you had uh, Shamsky, Shamsky hit 300, and then you dipped down to Boswell 279. Uh, do you think, do you remember back, Ron, was there a lot of pressure put on this fabulous pitching staff uh, due to, well, the lack of offense, I should say, when you're hitting oh. 240? Go ahead. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's, it's about how many runs you need to win, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and you can, you, you've, you've looked up the ERA of that staff, right? Oh, and, yes. And yeah. um, uh, it's, it's a pretty tiny little number. <laughs> And, and, and I would think because of that, the, the key move in that season was when they picked up Don Clendenin. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Don Clendenin, you know, who was a lawyer in the offseason, uh, basically engineered that move. The Pirates were trying to trade him to Montreal, and Clendenin was not having any of that. Mm -hmm. and, and he uh, refused to report and, uh, and uh, convinced uh, the powers that that existed then in baseball that if uh, they didn't send him to somewhere where he was interested in going uh, he was going to go practice law and uh, they could take baseball and stick it uh, mm -hmm. um they said would you go to the new york mets he said yes i will and he walked in the front door and 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 uh and right away was ready to go uh he started producing some offense right in the middle of the lineup he platooned at first base basically with ed craneville and and added added so much pop to our lineup, and and not only that, That's but he was a huge yeah. presence in the clubhouse. Okay, he um, he really um, he got on everybody. You know, he could he could needle Seaver, and he could needle the twenty fifth guy on the roster. Mm. I mean, he was an equal opportunity <laughs> ragger, and, and you know, I mean, he was amazing. No, and and you know, it's sometimes yeah, sometimes you know it, it you know. He could get on your nerves a little bit, but but you know what? It was always coming. From, you know, it, he could take it, and he could give it out, and and uh, it kept things alive. And and uh, he had, he had the. Uh, I, I I think he had the uh, uh, the stripes to be able to do that. I think he had played long enough. I think he had time and service enough to do that. He had the experience, and and he produced. When you did all of those things, you could be a leader. I mean, you know, unless you're producing, it's hard to be a leader. And and he was a leader. And I think he was the element, the missing element from that 69 team because we had everything else. That's for sure, especially yeah. the pitching. Uh, we're showing some pictures of Ron Soboda and his teammates on the screen as we go by. Tony, before we get to the 69 World Series, another question for Ron? Yeah, and uh, Ron, as far as... Uh, you know, uh, probably when you think of the 69 team, um, I mean, me personally, I think of like uh, all of you guys, you and Crane Pool and Seaver running around, jogging in the blue windbreaker, always stopping to say hi to the kids, sign autographs. And I mean, it was really, you know, it, it was just so different back then. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and I mean, I, I thank yeah, you yeah. personally for that. But uh, as far as uh, the incident where uh, Gill had walked out to remove Cleon from the game, yeah. Uh, can you give us, you know, your insight? What were you thinking at that time? Like everybody else, um, 
you know, there was a ball hit in the left field, and uh, Cleon had some trouble with his feet, and uh, you know, and and uh, it it was it was generally a little wet out in the outfield in Shea because it was built on a on a reclaim on reclaimed land. That's right. And yeah. and, and and when it rained, uh, the water used to bubble up a little bit, and the um, uh, the you know the drainage system there was not very good because of that, and um, uh, you know. I don't know if Cleon was having no trouble with his feet or what the deal was, but he uh, he didn't get after the ball. He missed the ball in left field, and he didn't get after it to satisfy uh, Gil Hodges, you know. And Gil came out of the dugout, and you know the the way I heard the story, the pitcher uh, the pitcher was wondering, um, geez, what did I do? Maybe uh, you know, maybe I'm in trouble. Um, uh, you know, maybe he thought maybe it was time for him to come out of the game, and of course he he. he it was the slowest walk, and he he, he went <laughs> by. The, it was, oh, it was slow motion. He walked by the pitcher, and um, and and Harrelson was at shortstop, and has told me that he thought, "Geez, what did I do?" Uh, <laughs> you know, and and of course, by the time he got by Harrelson, everybody knew, um, you, you know, that uh, that Cleon was the focus here, and. Uh, it took him all day to get out to left field, and he stood out there for a long time talking to Cleon and uh, basically told Cleon, um, you must be hurt. And Cleon said, I'm not hurt. No, he says, you're hurt. He said, uh, otherwise you would have got after that ball a little mm-hmm. better. Mm-hmm. And he took Cleon out of the game, and he put me in. <laughs> and and uh, um, I didn't know where my glove was. I mean, you know, I'm sitting there uh, thinking, what a beautiful day. I got a good seat, um, you know. <laughs> Sunshine. Game's not going real well, but hey, um, you know I'm I'm, I'm uh, you know I'm situated well. But um, um, what happened is he benched Cleon Jones um, to 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 you know make a point, and mm-hmm. and and that's it got through. But I I played for like the next six weeks or so. Um, I I got half my RBIs that season playing for Cleon Jones during that period when Gill was uh, yeah. trying to. Uh, Make a point. Um, you know, you might be leading the league or close to it, but uh, you got to hustle everything out. And you know, Cleon was another guy that could uh, could rankle uh, Hodge just a little bit. You know, um, uh, I, I certainly was in that category. Mm. Monday Night Sports Talk. Ron Swoboda on the phone with us. Uh, 69 commemorative Mets show uh, we're doing tonight. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit, Ron. The, um, you sweep the NLCS uh, over the Atlanta Braves. You didn't play because of the right-handed pitchers uh, right. that yeah. uh, the Braves were using. But I got were... on deck one time. I got, a, I got what they call a scare. I, I, I loosened <laughs> up on deck. I was, I was going to pinch hit with two outs, but um, I never got up there. So you go up against the Baltimore Orioles, the mighty Orioles in the World Series, Ron. Uh, Cuellar beats Seaver in game one, two great pitchers. Uh, did you ever think that, boy, we, how well, you we... you remember that first ball that was hit to right field, um, and I didn't catch it. It got over my head well. Yes, I, I mean, do. I let, I let, I mean, I just didn't play it well. I mean, it was the mm. first, uh, it was the first ball hit in the World Series, and I, I remember running out the right field feeling like a mechanical man. I mean, I, I just was nervous and uptight. And, you know, uh, here, you are, here you are in the World Series. And, 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 and what people need to understand is, you know, there's a lot of pieces of you out there, you know. Um, and that little kid that was like eight years old, nine years old, who played his first baseball, um, and you remember him, he's in there too. And, and, and his eyes are big as saucers. And you got to calm him down, along with the rest of you. And and uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of baseball memories in there that are trying to uh, you know convince themselves that they really are in a World Series. And 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 there you are. And mm-hmm. and until you calm down and 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 just relax and 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 just make it a baseball game again, uh, the hoopla and everything connected with it was uh, was pretty amazing. You know, pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. I. You hear that word amazing. Stage over fright. Yeah. Call it stage fright, whatever you want, but I was uh, certainly in the throes of it. Oh, yeah, and, and it's it just amazing to me, Ron, uh, after your ace loses the game one, uh, mm-hmm. you come back, Hoosman, Gentry win games two and three. Uh, game four, obviously, was game four. Here it is. Uh, if you didn't have a receiver, Jerry Kuzman could have been your ace, and that wouldn't have been a problem at all. Uh, oh, yeah, obviously, right. it. It matters to have a Tom Seaver. Um, mm. uh, you know what? What the guy? He didn't have an ERA over three 
<laughs> for the first 10 years of his baseball career. Um, when you look at those numbers like that and never missed a start, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, how many complete games were a part of those those first 10 years, um, you, you realize, you know, it, you know uh, that baseball has changed today, too. Oh, yeah. Well, certainly. And uh, actually, Kuzman had almost an identical ERA tone of Seaver that year, uh, 25 and 7 Seaver yeah. was, but Kuzman 2.28 with well, 7. Well, Kuzman got a lot of tough matchups. Kuzi Kuz was more likely to get the other team's ace. Well, you're right. You know, you never you're tried right. to match your ace against, against their, their ace. ace. You, you know, you always tried to uh, find, a, find a better matchup. And uh, Kuzi more often got, got better pitching on the other side. You have game four, exactly. yeah, game four, uh, Ron, Seaver in the box. Uh, you yourself go three for four mm -hmm. and, of course, make the catch in the ninth inning. A run did score on the play, but you saved more from scoring. Uh, first of all, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind, when, it, when it, Brooks Robertson hit the ball, did you think you had a shot at it? Well, um, I, I, when he first hit the ball, no. I thought we were in big trouble, mm -hmm. and uh, all I did was try to make the best break I could and take the right angle to get to the line of flight as, as quickly as I could. I mean, that's, that's what I practiced. I worked hard at being an outfielder. I made a few mistakes out there of judgment when I was younger in the game, and, and uh, it, it embarrassed me. And Eddie Yost, who was our third base yeah. coach, um, you know, I, could, I got him on the end, uh, got him on a fungo bat, and he wore me out with uh, mm -hmm. line drives, ground balls, uh, just trying to read the tough ones off the bat. I, I didn't take any lollipop fly balls. He hit me all hard stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, you know, and I, 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 I practiced reading the ball off the bat. And that's, that's the essence of playing the outfield is reading the ball as quickly as possible off the bat. By reading it, I mean figuring out where it's going and what you need to be doing to catch it, to play it correctly. And I mean, you don't know, it doesn't always mean you catch it, uh, uh, you know, in the air. It just means you, you read it and, and, and catch it correctly and, 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 uh, and do what you're supposed to do with it. And, and uh, his work with me made a big difference. And so um, conventional wisdom would would not have uh, uh, ranked me as a very good outfielder. But, you know, uh, m my feeling's always been um, uh, conventional wisdom is, not ne is, is mostly not wisdom. It's, it's, it's an idea that is not necessarily true and, and, and needs a little more uh, examination. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, I mean, after I made that catch, there was a sportscaster in Baltimore where I grew up. You know, and that's another aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I had rel I had relatives uh, in the stadium in Baltimore that I had gotten tickets for that I guarantee you were not rooting for us. <laughs> um, they they loved their Orioles. But um, uh, there was a sportscaster after I made that catch, and he went, "If you know, the uh, the only way Swoboda would ever make a living with his glove is to cook it and eat it," <laughs> which I thought was pretty amusing. Um, my mom, my mom didn't appreciate it, but well, uh, yeah, hey, you, know, it, but, it, you made your mark there, Ron. I mean, those efforts in the outfield that day, uh, of course, led to the Mets winning well, in ten. You no, know, I caught all. I made all three uh, outs uh, in that uh, inning. In the, in the uh, inning, you know, yes. the, in the ninth. Yeah, I caught yeah. all three balls. And, and is it correct? One of them was a pretty good. Uh, I ran out into the right field uh, alley and, and and ran one down a little bit too. I mm. I was pretty comfortable out there. Well, I you know, the at that point in my career, I was pretty catch. comfortable out there. Yeah, the thing that you bounced up and and actually had the uh, the sense to throw the ball home. Even though the run yeah. didn't score, you, well, you, I, you really I, did I always, move quick. Um, I always kid, uh, you know, it's a good thing I was pointed in the right direction when I came up. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's boy, it was something. The some other kids. one was, you know, um, you know, uh, you play nine years in the big leagues, you uh, you ought to leave with, uh, you know, ten seconds of highlight film, and, yeah. and that play allowed me to do it. You definitely had every, that. Every time I see Brooks Robinson every year, I go to a charity game down in Florida for a children's hospital that uh, carries Joe DiMaggio's name. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an old-timers game and a charity game. And uh, I see Brooks Robinson there every year, and every year I thank him for uh, not hitting the ball right to me. 
<laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have anything to talk about. Yeah, that's ter terrific stuff. Of course, Seaver Tony pitched the ten innings that that game. Well, that's four what I wanted to ask Ron ahead. about. You know, yeah. as far as yeah. Now, I, I I've seen actually my friend who is a doctor in California will be watching this, and we were uh, good little boys at soccer practice in Connecticut, so we were listening on the radio as we were playing soccer and got to see the highlights that night. As I've seen that game, I mean, here's Seaver throwing his guts out as it goes on, and we don't hear anything about pitch counts or any of this other stuff. And Gil Hodges is as calm as the day is long. I mean, um, what was uh, what was really? Uh, I mean, you know, it was a little difficult because you were in the field. But what were the guys saying, like, as far as this game? Hey, we got to win this. Uh, you know, gee, we can. Yeah, win I this. think um, here's here, Hodges probably said to us at that point in time. And let's face it, that's Game four is is is, is extremely pivotal. Yeah, um, we're up, we're up two games to one. So so if if we lose it, if we lose game four, we're even, and the O's have some momentum. Mm -hmm. um, if we win it, we're up three to one. So so it's it's um, it's it's, it's a make game. or break for the Orioles, and it you know obviously huge for us. Um, you know uh, so um, you know it. it it opens up an entirely different World Series, and I don't, I don't want to open too many doors for the Orioles mm -hmm, because, no. uh, you know, yeah, if, if they got hot, you know, who knows what happens. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it was – Hodges said to us, he said, going into the thing, he said, you don't have to be better than you are. He said, all you have to be is as good as you were to get here. So don't try to be bigger than life. Don't try to make better plays than you're capable of. Don't try to get outside the envelope uh, in that way. And 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 that was a that was a sobering, calming sort of idea that he laid on us. And and, and it was you know I mean you're going into the first, for most of us the first first World Series of our lives, and and we're, we're mostly a young team. And, and and for him to say something like that, it was it was just it just really grounded you a little bit. He said, "Hey, look, you don't have to be bigger in life. You don't have to be better than you've been to get here. Just 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 go play ball." And and uh, um, you know, so you didn't feel like you had to uh, step up. Just just you know, just turn it back into baseball and um, and and get after it like you've been getting after it. And of course, the Mets, Tony, go on to win game. Five, five to three. Kuzman yep. again uh, beats Eddie Watt. Swoboda that day, uh, two for four, double off of Eddie Watt. And you know, if it weren't for Clendenin's three home runs, uh, Ron, you might have had a shot at the MVP of that World Series. Yeah, Don Clendenin surely deserved it because all his all his bolts were big. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I had I, I never had you know there was a lot of people trying to you know make a case that you know I was like I never had any problem with that. I thought he was the world. I thought he was the MVP in the World Series, and as I told you, I thought he was, what, uh, you know, based on what we were going to go into that season with, based on what we were playing into June with, he was the most important uh, uh, addition to that club. So, so I didn't have any problem with that at all. Monday Night Sports Talk, uh, Ron Swoboda on the phone. About another minute, Tony, another ca uh, question for Ron. And, Ron, you know, as far as um – leaving the Mets, going to the uh, sort of anticlimactic, going to the Expos, and then ending up on a Yankee club that was in a, you know, maybe in a funk with Ralph Houck. Your experiences as a Yankee? Yeah, um, you know, it was, it was funny. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a thrill for me um, to come back to New York after I would sort of talked my way out of, uh, out of my Met uniform and got, um, you know, stranded up in montreal which uh, <laughs> you know it felt a little bit like triple a hmm. um um but uh um but it's funny i opened my big mouth and got traded uh away from new york i opened my big mouth in montreal and got traded back to new york <laughs> so uh um i was one for one no, I was, uh, t uh, you know, one for two <laughs> but uh um uh, you know it it, it was um Walking into new Yankee Stadium, I mean the old Yankee Stadium right. with the facade and the monuments out in the playing field and center field. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll just tell you one thing. I, I, I had played there before in the Mayor Trophy games, so I wasn't unfamiliar with Yankee right. Stadium. 
But and we knew we weren't coming into a great team. It was uh, CBS owned them, and they were not at you know they were on the downslide as an organization. But the first time I put on that Yankee uniform and walked up those steps out onto the field in Yankee Stadium, all those little short hairs on the back of my neck mm. stood up, and I and and I, I got this wonderful sort of rush that was like. Uh, I'll be damned. This is this is pretty this is pretty neat. I'm a Yankee and I'm standing here in Yankee Stadium with all of it, all of its history and legend, you know. And it was yeah. like that. That was very cool. I was not prepared to be awed uh, by that experience, but I was. And that that you know I never forgot that. I mean it wasn't it wasn't a great time to be a Yankee, but uh, you know Ralph Hack was as decent a man and mm. you know um, uh, you know a real man. You know, uh, uh, we're talking uh, Army Rangers, World War II, right, yeah. uh, the whole deal. I mean, he was a real man, and and uh, you know, I, I, maybe I didn't appreciate uh, that opportunity as much as I should have. But uh, but uh, you know, it, it was that 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 first moment there was pretty special. I I think what else I discovered was the National League was so much better than the American League back then because. Mm-hmm. You know, they were, you know, and more black players. They had more uh, uh, Latino players in the National League. You're right. The American League, uh, you know, didn't measure up in my book. And uh, it's a good, I guess, a good way to kind of end this conversation on a positive note. So sadly, yeah. But, uh, well, and I must mention uh, Ron Swoboda once. For Happler. Two home runs off of Steve Carlton the night, uh, the day. I remember that night. The 19th strikeout game, but uh, lost. Because well, that, that made up for the five Ks. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that definitely did. But uh, I saw them both, Ron. There, there's, so uh, <laughs> there's so much circularity here. Yeah. Um, you know, things coming around that go around. And uh, I struck out five times against the Cardinals. And so Steve Carlton was pitching for the Cardinals. Mm. And he won the guy I hit very well anyway. And I hit in that 69 season, hit the two, the two home runs. Uh, two two-run home runs. The late Tommy Agee was on base each time. Boy, yeah, you know, I remember they, that. They took a one nothing lead. Well, you had to be listening on the radio because it was in St. Louis. Yep. Um, I, mm. And uh, it was not I on was. television. I, I Yeah, and I was. I can remember the radio I was listening to. Well, the odd thing, I mean, um, uh, uh, Harry Carey was the broadcaster for the Cardinals, and he had both me and Steve Carlton on as his guest after the <laughs> after the, the game and you know i'm in there like wow what what just happened and i'm looking over there and there's steve carlton he looks like somebody just ran over his dog <laughs> oh, boy. you know he's 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 struck out 19 guys set a set a major league record and and sucked up an l he did not <laughs> win the game like, oh, he's well. like what the hell he's like what the hell happened <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, well, that, that, that was something. That's classic. And, uh, yeah. Ron, God bless you guys. We'll never forget what you did. You know, we'll, we'll never forget Shea Stadium and Jane Jarvis and Lindsey Nelson and, and Ralph Kiner. And you really meant a lot to us, and, it, and we're so grateful. And you know who else? You know who else? Bill Who's Shea. It? Don't forget the guy. I will never after. forget Bill Shea. No, it'll always be Shea to he us. Was that's for sure. Guy. He was a he was a heck of a guy, yeah. and um, I, I I spent a little time with him later on, and uh, just just uh, just a just a wonderful wonderful man, and and an important you know yeah a part of what made that whole thing happen way back in the beginning. That's right. He brought National League Baseball back to New York, and that's a great way to end the figured it out. It was probably the <laughs> prime mover. That's for sure. That's for sure. Ron, we can't thank you enough. Thank uh, you again, enough, you've Ron. given us uh, more than enough time. And uh, again, thanks. It's, it's it's a special year for you, for the Mets, for everyone. And, and just yeah, we'll uh, have a little fun. We'll probably be up there before the summer's over. I'm pretty sure they'll they'll do something for the 40th uh, anniversary of '69. And we'll be watching. Thanks so well, much, thank Ron, and uh, we'll be in touch. It was great talking cool. to you. Tony, Bob, my pleasure. All right. Thank you. Good night.